I remember when I was young, when I was five or so, I was just fascinated and you could say intoxicated by smoke. And it didn't matter if it came from cigarettes or incense. Because my aunt, she used incense all the time. And I really, really love burning incense. And I remember my uncle, he smoked and my aunt smoked. And he would smell like, which is one of the a good smell to me, which might sound weird to other people, but he always smelled like gas and tobacco. And that mixture, like when I would get in this car and my cousins and all of us, we would go to the store or whatever. I just remember that smell. And they used to smoke the camel uh, unfiltered cigarettes. And... My mom, she would smoke periodically. Um, every time she had to do a grade term papers, because she was a teacher, she taught nursing. So every time she had to grade these papers, she would smoke Bel Airs. I don't even think they make Bel Airs anymore. But she would smoke those cigarettes. And I remember that it was like a white package with blue clouds on the, cu on the, the packaging of the cigarettes, which was really weird because tobacco smoke takes your air anyway so it was kind of like ironic that it would have clouds and be called Bel Air that was wild I remember when I was at my grandmother's house seeing a and I was around eight at this time but I would see cigarette butts on the ground and I picked the cigarette butts up and it would be like enough to which is gross but it would be enough for me to like light up and smoke don't ask me where I got the matches don't I don't know but I lit that thing up smoke it of course I know I probably wasn't taking a full inhale because I don't remember choking or anything like that then at 14 I remember getting a pack of more cigarettes. I used to like the way the cigarette look. It was the beige ones with the had the it was trimmed in green, and I liked the different color and that it was long a long cigarette. And I would smoke those. Those were so nasty to me though. But I would hang out at this lady's house. It, she had an apartment building. It was behind my grandmother's house hang out and she had all of the great music George Benson and Teddy Pendergrass all of the good stuff and she smoked Benson and Hedges and those cigarettes remind me of someone that was regal like the packaging it looked all expensive with the foil and the, the gold foil and everything I remember that well like I noticed different things and I really was like I really like smoking even at that age just being around it at that age it was it was a trip and as I got older just a teenager I would pick it up from time to time and put it back put it back down and it was really weird because I was able to pick up put it down at will without any ill effect as far as withdrawal that I noticed I didn't notice any of that and and I used to smoke a Salem light 100s I remember that then in my 30s I continued on I picked up again in my 30s and also I remember I would switch off because I found these cigarettes they came in different colors they were called Nat Sherman's and they were really strong but here I go again because I'm thinking oh they look so good though and they look so they make me look different if people see me smoking these they'll be like what is that and they came in like the pack had different colors so they had green yellow um, it was like a light pink and I want to say uh, it might have had a red cigarette in there too with a gold tip 
gold filter tip. Those things were awful. And I also bought a pack of the black Matt Shermans, which were all of them, they were black, trimmed in gold. Those were really strong. I, I remember when I was in my depression, I would just drive around smoking those Nat Shermans. And I know I had some alcohol or some sort with me on and off, but I would just smoke and smoke and smoke. And it's really wild because I know I didn't have any studio sessions booked. So I didn't worry about my vocals or anything, my throat or anything. I didn't worry about anything of that sort. I, it was just a dark period of time. Then as I got a little bit older, I switched off. I switched off to the black and mild. Instead of what they call freaking the black and mild, I wouldn't do all of that because I, I said it's too involved and I'm just, uh, I was just over it. I just want to get the nicotine in my body. So I would take a, like a long straight pen and stick it through the tip of um, the plastic tip and kind of punch holes in, in it so I can get a good draw. And I would kind of manipulate the, manipulate the cigar a little bit to kind of loosen up instead of taking that uh, inner cardboard uh, cylinder out and doing all of that and packing it back in. And the whole thing is ritualized and it just felt like a whole ritual, just as me doing that little bit and biting it up and taking that first drag and just enjoying the, because I would always get a buzz because I was really inhaling by this time. And I did notice that it was difficult to stop. I couldn't stop. And each day, I kept thinking, I'm not going to stop today. And every day, it just kept getting progressively worse and worse. And it coincided with uh, my drinking and um, the marijuana smoking. Because that would kind of cap off the marijuana anyway. It would just... It would just heighten the high and made everything more intense. And I noticed that after a while it was wearing me thin. It just really was working me because every 20 minutes you go through a withdrawal. Every 20 minutes withdrawal. So you have to keep on going back. So I remember one day I went to the store to get some more uh, black and mouths and they had a sale on the uh, jazz it was a new flavor called jazz I said let me try this so I ended up getting those and I had smoked up the regular black and mild wine that I had I went back to the store I said I'm gonna save this jazz and I'll go back and get some more of the wine and store owner or one of the workers in the store he was like you're back again and that was a trip because I thought okay this could be either good or bad and I thought well maybe it's good because for them to say that for him to say that you know he's in the business of making money he doesn't care how many times you come back to the store but I feel like it was something watching over me and he knew that it was an issue with me to keep coming back like that because people usually don't go through those cigars like that. So I thought about that and I go home and I fire up that daggone jazz and it was hideous. It was the nastiest thing that I had ever tasted. And I ended up saying, okay, I'm I'm done with this. And I don't know what it was. It was something about that. It might other people might like that one, but I didn't like that one. I had gotten into the secret and into manifestation and of vision boards. And I had a vision board 
I know I put on the vision board that I would stop drinking, I would stop smoking, and I would get a house and I would get a car, different things like that, and I put it in a prominent place. I didn't think anything of it, and sure enough, I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. So, as that was going on, still didn't think about the vision board. I know that I would pass it here and there. So what I did was I um, got rid of my ashtrays. I got rid of the lighters. Anything that would facilitate me smoking, I got rid of. Then, I decided, you know, there's some things that you have to really change. You have to figure out what is your triggers and what causes you to smoke. What caused you to smoke? What caused you to backslide? And the thing was, I thought I was finished, but I ended up picking up again and this is after the house manifested the car manifested then I ended up having a trigger at work it was at this job that I was working it was the people were stressful and I started reading blogs and I started reading and looking at videos and different things like that different books on smoking addictions and how to get rid of the addiction and I started watching videos like this so I watched videos and I actually read stories of people that had lost limbs and and I didn't even know that people can lose arms and legs different things like that from nicotine I didn't know so I started looking into that and really consider taking it in and then I ended up trying to stop again. So this time it was much, much, much harder than before. Much harder than before. And I didn't know, I found out later on that they liken nicotine to a heroin addiction. And they say that nicotine is much harder to even kick than heroin. And that was very interesting to me because I thought, hmm, I had taken opioids before and I didn't know that the opioids actually, I learned that, that they lead, there's a gateway to heroin. And I say all the time that it was somebody I know who watching over me because I used to take the pills and all of that and never thought about graduating or moving forward within that addiction the one thing that happened was I would run out and that would be it and I would continue on with the alcohol so I never thought okay this is a gateway to heroin and thank goodness I didn't know that at the time so I ended up taking my ashtrays, I would, I destroyed all the ashtrays, I cleaned the house up, I did everything to get rid of that smell, anything that would remind me of the smoking, and then I was free of it for, I would say maybe a few months, and I had a dream that I had picked up again, that was one of the most horrific drink that was like a nightmare it was horrific to me because I woke up and I didn't even believe that it wasn't true I thought that dream was it because I went around the house like smelling like oh my goodness did I pick up and I never had a drinking dream before but I had a smoking dream so that thing was really on me it was on me tough so I continued on and was free of it for a long time, free from the nicotine. 
And what I would do is also, because it's, um, they say that hand to mouth fixation that you have, I got peppermint sticks and I would eat those. Um, I like holding pens and different things in my hand. So I would get like a nice looking pen, hold that in my hand. And I did start vaping a little bit with zero um, milligrams of nicotine, which I know some people say that the vaping is bad, but you know, I'm transparent, it, but no nicotine in this, trust me. But ended up doing that like later later on after I was free of the nicotine for a long, long, long time. And luckily during my smoking, I didn't have any vocal sessions or anything like that. I didn't have anything really heavy booked because I did notice that when I smoked, it took all the high notes, it shaved them off. They were gone. And it took me a long time to recover. I'm still recovering from not being able to go up as high as I used to. It should come back maybe, but, and I need to work at it a little bit more, but that is some of the things that really, it, it changed. And aside from that, and going through the withdrawals, I really turned into a B when I was going through the withdrawals too, because it was it was bad. Just me trying to stay off of the nicotine. So I tell people when they're going through it, when I tell them my story, just dig your heels in. You have to really stay on it. I tell people to journal, to write everything they're feeling. Get all of your emotions out. Make sure that you're being completely honest on that paper because it's very cathartic to get those emotions out and to really express yourself in whatever stressful information stressful uh, situation that you're going through it's good to get that out uh, talk to someone that is not judgmental that can give you support not someone that is going to talk down to you about whatever it is that you're going through because you're going to need that support because you're going on a different journey this time. You're going on a journey of not being chained to nicotine and not being basically a victim of what it can do to your body.